Hello. Ten years ago, Clive Barker was touring his fringe theatre group around Europe in between spells on the dole. Now, he's recognised as one of the leading horror and fantasy writers with titles such as Weeb World, The Great and Secret Show, and Imagica becoming huge international bestsellers. Since he directed the cult classic Hellraiser, Barker has made a series of successful films based on his novels and short stories, and has recently made his home in Hollywood. In tonight's programme, we look at Barker's controversial literary journey into the darker reaches of human experience. When we've seen Hellraiser, when we've looked at some of the books, we do sit and wonder from where he got this quality. Uh, I think we're still at a loss as to know who to blame. <laughs> um, because it's so alien to both of us. We, we couldn't approach anything no, like that, could no we, in, in no putting that down on paper? No. The artist's side, I can understand mm. the drawing. Although, once again, his drawing is not the sort of thing that I would want too much hanging on my wall. He no. doesn't get it from me, and I don't think he gets it from his dad. Big and black the clouds may be, time will pass away. If you put your trust in me, I'll make bright your day. Liverpool in the 50s was not the most stimulating of cities. I lived in very conventional, rather reassuring circumstances, but feeling that my imagination was pushing me into areas of, of darkness and anxiety, unease, and also into areas where, uh, where those very conventional elements, where those very reassuring elements were just blown away. Doors opened within those environments and things came through those doors. I mean, that was very much what was going on in my imagination. Open up your eyes now. Tell me what you see. It is no surprise now. What you see is me. Where Clive was, had his own room, so he could do all his work up there, and providing he kept all that mess in there, then I had to let that go. Sometimes I despaired, I must be honest, but... But no, he had his own place, and what he did there was, his, was up to him. It was the place where I wrote, it was the place where I drew, it was the place where I imagined. I was very secretive, I've always been fairly secretive. I needed to feel as though what I was doing was... Uh, almost had the feel of a, a dark, perhaps slightly forbidden, process. At 11, Clive Barker went to Liverpool's Quarrybank School, where his art teacher was Alan Plent. He had a wall around him that was 
built by his own enthusiasm and talent and uh, the fact that he was so grown up. It wasn't like talking to a boy. Uh, he didn't tell jokes, you know, or, or act the fool. All his energies were devoted to being uh, an entertaining, serious artist. And uh, there's very few boys like that, actually. There was a guy with a, uh, a noose around his neck, uh, and one of those fake hands with the hairy warts on the back of it. And he was being led around the school from uh, class to class by this guy, whom I later discovered to be Clive Barker. And he was uh, doing a tour of the school to advertise uh, um, a play that he had written, was directing, starring in. He was doing Salome. And of course, this meant a decapitated head. <laughs> And Clive must have spent a long time making this head. It was absolutely wonderful, and it was as gory as you could possibly get. But it wasn't just the fact that here we have a gory head on a plate. It was the way it was delivered to us in his long silken gown, you see, which he preferred, I think. Um, he came to the front row and raised the head at us with a dramatic gesture and frightened the life out of the lot of us because the, the sort of entrails of the head fell down from underneath. <laughs> you think he was the catalyst for good or evil? I mean, the, the fact that he pulled all these people together was one thing. I'm not sure all the parents were always happy with what they did and where they finally... They weren't, were they? I think they were always fellow students and the parents of fellow students and occasionally uh, members of staff who would say whatever's, you know, going on in Barker's head, we should get into a therapist very soon. He, he couldn't allow people to sort of talk him down or condemn what he was doing. And in the end, because of this attitude which kept people out there, and you either agreed with Clive or you stayed away, and you, know, you either went to the gates of hell with him or you kept your place and stayed out there, he was not to be interrupted in his journey. And of course, Quite a lot of people and quite a lot of parents were quite worried that he might take some of their children along with him. You know, you grow up in, in a working class situation in, in a depressed industrial town like Liverpool and one always thought that the artistic life was something that other people did. And Clive was very good at, without sort of lecturing or, or trying to make cod speeches about doing this stuff he simply seemed to offer an example that well my god actually you, you can do this you know it's just up to you if you want to try this there aren't any rules you don't have to pass an exam you can just start doing theater you can start making movies you can start writing you can start drawing painting whatever When he was 19, Barker and his friends decided to make an 8mm film based on the story of Salome. We scraped together money, we put the stuff on black and white, the stuff was developed in a bathtub. I mean, it was very, very low grade, if you will, uh, as far as the, the technological uh, aspects of it were concerned, but it was done with passion and it was done with, um, with no rules. ourselves pretty much as Warhol's factory on Merseyside. You know, there was a period of time when we were all sharing a house together and there were, you know, little bits of creativity going on in various uh, ways and we, we developed something of a reputation for ourselves as being a little weird. Mm -hmm. After leaving University, Barker spent the next 10 years on the dole, touring with his fringe theatre group, The Dog Company. I mean, we were a completely unknown company. Uh,